Hi, this is Robbie with Tickner Photography. I just purchased a Synology DS413 network attached storage device, a NAS. As a photographer, we use a ton of disk storage space, and my previous NAS, uh, Western Digital My Book, just filled up completely. So I needed a new network storage solution, and a multiple disk rated NAS is perfect for me. I will typically access my data from different computers inside the house, so I like my data available on the network. So it's not attached to a specific computer, it's available from any computer. That's cool. Uh, a NAS with a RAID means that your storage is protected if one drive fails. So this particular device will hold four drives, and the data is stored in pieces on each drive and protected. So if one of the drives fails, you can take it out, you can plop in a new one, and your data will be reconstructed and it's good to go, it's protected. I would have kind of preferred to get a five disc RAID, but the Synology one was slightly out of my budget. So I went with a four drive version, and that should be fine. For right now, I got two three terabyte drives. They're Western Digital Red, you want to get a red drive when you get a NAS versus the consumer green version. The green version, they're energy saving drives and they don't quite work well in a NAS. Apparently they will fail prematurely just because they have the potential to be spun all the time. Whereas a red drive is specifically designed for a NAS. And their mean time to failure is supposedly longer when they're on all the time. So they'll potentially last longer in a NAS. Good to know. So why did I go with a Synology 4-drive network-attached storage device versus the competition, say the Drobo? Drobo just released a new network-attached storage device, 5-disc, which I really like, and it's brand spanking new. It's called the 5N, I believe. It replaces their FS, which historically has been quite slow, somewhat mixed reviews, but it was still good. The new one is solid. It's apparently very fast. It has a couple really nifty features that I kind of wish this one had. The ability to attach a SSD drive and a battery just in case power fails, it can power itself down before it completely fails. But there are a couple things that the Synology does that I really like. So the Drobos are made for people that just want to plug it in and go. They're simple, you just, you attach it, it only has a gigabit ethernet port, you plug it in, turn it on, Forget about it, that's all you need to know. The Synology is more for a power user. If you really know what you're doing and want more advanced features, Synology has it. Synology has apparently a thriving application development environment, so people are building apps for it that you can install on it. But more than that, it has additional ports. It has a USB 2.0 port in the front, and it has two USB 3.0 ports in the back, along with an eSATA port. So this is all in addition to the gigabit. This allows you to plug in a external hard drive to this guy, SSH into this thing's Linux terminal. You can write a cron job that will do an rsync backup of your data onto an external device that you have sitting here that you can switch out once in a while. It just, it gives you a lot more options if you wanna do backups without having a computer involved. You could just plug in an external hard drive, tell it to go, let it sit there all night, and it's working, your computers are off, everything's happening. This has some features for more advanced users. It'll still, you can still plug it in and forget about it, but if you're a more advanced user, it has some additional features that I liked. So that's why I chose Synology. So now I'm gonna plug in my drives and get it all spun up and see what it looks like. See how loud it is, I'm a little bit curious about that. For my initial setup, I only got two three terabyte drives that I'm gonna put in here they will be mirrored because there's only two, so I'll only have three terabytes of data available. And then in a few months, I'm gonna get two additional four terabyte drives, which should give me 10 terabytes of protected storage on this, and that should last me a while, hopefully. So let me go turn this thing on, and then I'll show you what its environment looks like when you try to access it remotely. So I popped the drives into the NAS and plugged in, turned it on, and I followed the quick start guide, which basically directed you at its IP address, and it logs you into this really slick web interface. So this is in a web browser connected to the NAS, and it looks almost like Windows. You have windows that you can drag around that contain information. You can open and close them. It has system monitoring utilities on the side. 
So it took um, probably five minutes and it created the file system. And now it's providing me a little bit of information. It's running a, a background parity integrity test, which it says will take quite a while. It's probably verifying both drives are nice and happy. But there's quite a bit of information available. I mean, it shows you the temperature of each drive. Also, right now the hard drives are working away as hard as they can, and it's completely silent. I'm pretty much astonished. Those red drives are pretty cool. In this NAS, in this configuration, it's silent right now. Awesome. So what else can this thing do? A ton of things, apparently. So I created a new user, but it can have an FTP file system. You can set it up as a web server. It can be a print server, tons of different backup and network configurations. So the thing that I was talking about was a terminal. You set up and enable SSH. And then from there, if you have an SSH client, you can now log in to the Linux server that represents this. And you can see what it's doing, where it's doing it to. You can set up your own cron jobs. You can mount drives when you plug them in via USB and then set up scheduled jobs to back up specific things or copy files, move back and forth, whatever. But you have a lot of control in this thing right out of the box. And then in addition to that, there's this package center thing. And this will take a second to load, but here we are. Just to give you an idea of some of the apps available for this thing, you can have a Drupal web server. There's cloud backups. You could back up to Amazon Glacier, I've read. There's an app for that. There's media services. You set up a Wikipedia, a mail server, picture station. I mean, tons and tons of these things available. Really cool. So you just click on them and install them. You're good to go. I presume they're not that difficult to write. So as a developer, I might be able to build something for this if I so desire. So with my two three terabyte hard drives, I'm getting about 2.7 terabytes of usable space. And that's pretty much what I expected. So later on this year, I'll put in two additional four terabytes and should get me right around 10 available space. So our next step is to actually do something with this NAS. It's on the network. I had to first create a shared folder. So I basically dedicated all of the space to this shared folder. And this is what I'll put all of my pictures on. The next step is to get it to work in Lightroom, but there's a middle step to make that happen. We have to go into my computer and we have to set up a mapped drive. So I already did that, but I'll show you how I did it. You'd go disk station and then photo storage. That's my, the name of my share. You'd grab that thing. You'd say map network drive, reconnect at login, you would put that in there, and that should about do it. That will automatically connect this now when I start up my computer. Now we can point Lightroom at it. So now what we need to do is connect to our map drive that we just created. And it's really easy. You say add folder, and then in my computer, you choose the share, and I created a subfolder in there just called pictures because it's easier, and I'll say select. So now that we've attached the drive to our Lightroom catalog, I'm going to create a folder, call it 2013, and now it's available to put stuff into. So now we're going to move data using Lightroom. So January is what I want to move. You just drag it down here, let it go, and it will begin moving folder. So now it will move all of the data from January. It'll replicate that folder, push it down here, and then remove it. So I'll have this data off of my local drive and onto a network protected storage. So I hope you found this first look of the Synology DS413 somewhat useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.